Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, on this day you opened the way of eternal life to every race and nation by the promised gift of your Holy Spirit. Shed abroad this gift throughout the world by the preaching of the gospel, that it may reach to the ends of the earth through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. I have to say I'm so happy to be back. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one of them heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians. Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to the Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed him, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, 
and I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I shall show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun, the sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say poem, Psalm 104 in unison. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea, with its living things too many to number, both of the great and small. There move the ships, and there is that Leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you, to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. You open your hand, and they are filled with good things. You hide your face, and they are terrified. You take away their breath, and they die and return to dust. You send forth your spirit, and they are created. And so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth, and it trembles. He touches the mountains, and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for, it, for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for patience with it. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what the mind of the spirit, because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus said to his disciples, when the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify 
because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. <clears throat> Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. <clears throat> But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, <clears throat> because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. He will take what is mine and declare it to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> Today we celebrate the day of Pentecost, what some call the birthday of the church. And apparently you all got the memo because you dressed appropriately. On this day, we often wear red to celebrate the flame of the Holy Spirit coming upon the disciples in the book of Acts. <clears throat> the word Pentecost means 50, 50 days. And actually, we remember two stories on this day. In the Hebrew Scriptures, 50 days after death has passed over the children of Israel and freed them from Egypt, God gives the stone tablets of the law to Moses to give to the people of Israel. And so in the New Testament, 50 days after Christ has passed over from death to life and so brought us to new life, God sends the Spirit onto the disciples and so the law is written on their hearts. In both stories, we celebrate the coming of God to dwell among his people and his drawing his people closer to him. And so this is, as some say, the birthday of the church. In this story from the book of Acts, all of the disciples are gathered in one place, which as I said in my writing one time, is a miracle in itself, because it tends to be really hard to coordinate schedules for church people, let me tell you. <laughs> So that's the first miracle. They're all in one place, gathered together, praying, talking about the deeds and the life of Jesus. And suddenly, tongues of flame appear above them. Suddenly, they speak so that everyone around them understands each in his own native language. And so this is the coming of the Spirit of God, the life of God being lived in the church, the breath of God being breathed by the disciples. And that spirit allows them to tell others about Christ and to heal in his name. The word spirit means breath, both in Hebrew and in Greek. So this spirit that comes upon the disciples is the breath of God being breathed into their lungs and breathed out through their words, through their prayers, through their deeds of healing. 
And that same spirit is still active in the church. It has no less power than it did on that first day of Pentecost. So what does it look like? How might the spirit be at work today among us and through us? And what exactly does that mean? What is this spirit for which we are to wait and hope? One way to think about the spirit, the Holy Spirit in the church, is to think about music. When musicians come together in an orchestra, for example, they all play different parts. You have strings and woodwinds and brass, and sometimes they play with vocalists or a piano. All the parts are different, but they learn to work together. They learn first to work by themselves. Musicians, in order to play in an orchestra or any kind of group, have to spend hours in the practice room playing their scales, doing their breathing exercises, looking at what's written on the, pra- on the page and playing it again and again and again. And I used to drive my parents crazy by doing that for hours on end. So musicians have to first learn to work alone, and then they have to learn to work together. Now I'll let you in on a secret. Musicians don't all like each other. <laughs> that may come as a shock. Musicians don't all like each other, but they play in different sections, they have different personalities, and there are even kind of jokes that go back and forth about people who play different instruments. So there's some kind of rivalry between like bassoon players and oboe players that I never really understood, and everybody makes fun of the percussions. They don't all like each other, and sometimes, especially in high school, that gets intensified when One player dates another player, and then they break up, and then people take sides and get into all sorts of fights about everything. But despite all that, they have to learn to work together. Whatever they think about the other people in the orchestra or their instruments, they have to come together and play what's written on the page. They have to learn to breathe together, to be in the same space, and work towards the common goal of making music. And if they do, then something beautiful may happen. If musicians learn to work alone and then to work together, they just may learn to play together. We don't say, I work the piano or I work music. We say, I play music. Because music needs a sense of freedom and of joy. And even if musicians don't particularly like one another, they can learn sometimes to overcome that and breathe together and find that freedom and that joy and make music, make art, make something beautiful that comes forth from their being together. It is as if when even two musicians are in the same place and they learn to be with each other and to play together, it is as if something is there greater than the sum of its parts as if there is a third among the two. It is as if the music takes on a life of its own because they learn to work alone, to work together, and then maybe to play together. And I think the spirit works that way in the church. Our openness to the spirit comes first by our life of prayer. St. Paul says, we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. The life of the spirit begins with the life of prayer of each and every believer in Christ. And you don't, know, you don't need to know the right words to say. The prayer book is a great tradition, and its strength and weakness is that it's beautiful. So sometimes we make the mistake of thinking that our own individual prayers need to be beautiful as well. They do not. The life of prayer is simply lifting up our needs, our concerns, our thanksgivings, our regrets to God, and letting God do with that whatever God will. And if you don't know the right words to say, then the Spirit will help you. The Spirit intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words. 
so that work alone is first an openness to the Spirit in the life of prayer of each and every believer, going into our closet, as Jesus says, into a secret place, and praying to our Father who is in secret. That is the work, the individual work of every believer. It begins there, the openness to the Spirit. And then if we have learned to work alone in that sense, we learn to work together as a church. Now I'll let you in on another secret that may shock you. Not everybody in the church likes each other either. <laughs> I know not in this church, you know, we all like each other and agree about everything. But I've heard that in some other churches, not everybody likes each other. Right? And I'll let you in on another secret. That's okay. We don't have to. Nowhere in the Gospels does Jesus say that you have to like everybody. But he does give us the possibility to love everyone. We have to learn work first to work alone in our life of prayer and then to work together in praying together as a church as we do every Sunday and in serving others together as we do in so many ways in this church. That's working together and you can even do it with people you don't like. And here's the beautiful part. If we do, if we practice that work alone of prayer in secret and work together through prayer and service with our brothers and sisters, we may find that something beautiful happens. We may find that we're actually playing together, that there may come a sense of freedom and of joy in the work we do together. And that is where we find the Spirit moving among us. Something is there that is greater than the sum of its parts. There is another presence moving within us and between us as we work together and play together as the church. So that life of the Spirit begins with every believer in the solitary work of prayer. We open ourselves to it more fully when we work together and pray together as a church, and it gives us life freedom and joy to tell others about Christ and to heal in his name. That spirit is no less active or powerful today than the spirit was on the first day at Pentecost. The primary work of that spirit is to bring others to Christ. Everything comes back to him. Christ performed the greatest act of openness to the Spirit when he gave up his own life for us, and that same Spirit raised him up from death. It can raise us up from death as well if we open ourselves to it through prayer, working alone, and working together. So how can you open yourself to the life of the Spirit this week? Each one of us can find some time this week to spend in prayer alone and let the Spirit pray for us and through us. And each one of us this week can find some way to work with someone else, to open ourselves to how the Spirit may work through them, whether or not we like them. How can we open ourselves to the life of the Spirit this week? And what might the Spirit of God do through us. If we learn to work alone and then learn to work together and even to play together, the Holy Spirit of God will move in our church, bring people to God through his Son, and work deeds of healing in his name. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to stand and affirm your faith in our Lord and his Church in the words of the Nicene Creed. 
we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. And prayers of the people. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our, for our families, families, friends, and neighbors, and, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God, for, for all who proclaim the gospel, gospel and all who seek the truth, for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Eugene and Robert, our bishops, and for all bishops and other ministers, for, for all who serve God in the church, for the special needs and concerns of this gathering, we pray especially for all who have been adversely affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Hear us, Lord, for your, for your mercy, mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We pray in thanksgiving for all who are putting their lives at risk to care for the sick and provide essential services during the pandemic. We exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them, who put your trust in you. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor.
Have mercy upon us, most merciful God. In your compassion, forgive us our sins. Known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. In fulfillment of his true promise, the Holy Spirit came down on this day from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith, and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. First, the prayer of spiritual communion for those who could not be with us in person today. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. Since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus. And let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. And now the post-communion prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and sinfulness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated for just a moment. <clears throat> Our worship schedule continues here at Middleham and St. Peter's um, this week with uh, service for, of Holy Eucharist and prayers for healing at St. Peter's Chapel on Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. And then Sunday morning uh, in here, Smith Hall at 8.30 a.m. and 11 a.m. Uh, the the 8.30 service will continue to be live streamed as well for those who cannot make it. Uh, but beginning on June 20th, as I mentioned last week, we will be moving back outside. So we'll go outside and um, have one service on Sunday morning there at 9.30 a.m. Uh, that service will be in person for those who wish to come. Outside, as well as some indoor seating options, uh, if it's too hot or if it's raining, we'll figure that out. Um, and we'll be able to sing. So on June 20th, I want everybody to sing loudly um, when we meet together outside. And on that Sunday, uh, to celebrate that, we'll have some form of a picnic, okay? It won't be like we usually do. We can't all bring stuff and share it with each other, but we will provide food from here in some safe fashion, okay? So that's June 20th. We'll have uh, one combined service and picnic, and that combined service will last throughout the summer. Any other announcements at this time? Yes, Jim. Now it's on. Uh, this week, we had a fire alarm in the building, and it started in the basement, and then whatever caused that fire alarm to go off set off the fire alarm in upstairs here, which brings us to the next issue. We have a bad habit as a congregation of leaving all of these doors open when we're not here. If we have a fire, it will go right through the building. All these doors are fire rated, even the ones with the glass, because they have the metal in the glass. So I would ask anyone who uses this building that when they leave in the evening or when they leave, they make sure that all these doors in the hallways, the kitchen, and everything are closed, which will at least eliminate some of the fire hazard. Thank you, Jim. Thanks for helping us to stay safe and take care of our building. Any other announcements at this time? Oh, yes, Anne. So, 
As tradition, when we have senior acolytes that are graduating, we give them their senior medal. This year we have two. We have Jordan Jedry and Jack Briggs. Jordan's not here this morning, but Jack is. So congratulations, Jack. Would you like to tell them where you're going and what you're going to do next? <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Uh, that was loud. Um, you think I'd know that because I've been running this thing for a couple of weeks. Um, if you didn't notice, I decided to wear my shirt today. I did not know that when I was leaving the house. Um, I'm going to Towson University to study um, electronic media and film. Um, I plan to go into screenwriting, hopefully. Um, it's been fun. Uh, most of you have known me since I was in diapers, so uh, it's been a nice 18 years. Thank you. Don't go away just yet. I just wanted to say a prayer for you and for those who are graduating, so let us pray. Dear God, we pray that you would bless these, your children, uh, who are moving on to new parts of their lives. We pray that you continue to bless them, guide them, and keep them, help them to grow in the knowledge and lo on love of you, and to serve others in your name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Congratulations. to stand for our closing hymn. love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.